This is the new 2025 Toyota Crown Signia, and it's an SUV, or at least that's what Toyota says. I think it looks like a wagon, but they call it a crossover, which makes this Toyota's ninth SUV. It's replacing the Venza, and it's supposed to fit in between the RAV4 and the Highlander in size, but it's more expensive than the Highlander, even though it has less seats. If you aren't confused yet, well, great. Today, I'm going to review the Crown Signia and show you all of its quirks and features. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by Cars and Bids, which is my online car auction website for modern enthusiast cars. So far, Cars and Bids has sold almost $500 million worth of cars. All sorts of special and cool stuff like this and this and this and this. If you're looking to sell your enthusiast car, reach a vast audience at carsandbids.com. All right, time for the quirks and features of the Toyota Crown Signia. Starting with undoubtedly its biggest quirk, which is what is this and how does it fit into Toyota's lineup? So. Toyota says this is a two-row crossover SUV, and it's replacing the Venza, which is ending production later this year. This goes on sale sometime this summer. However, I take issue with some of Toyota's statements here. Let's start with the crossover SUV component. I got out my trusty cars and bids tape measure and found that this is about 63 and a half inches high which makes it shorter in height than a Subaru Outback, which is about 66 inches high. Now, one could easily make the argument that the Outback has gotten so much larger over the years, it is no longer really a wagon, but it's now kind of a crossover itself, which could make this also a crossover. But still, if you think of the Outback as a wagon, this is shorter in height. Now, the Crown Signia is taller than my Mercedes E-Class station wagon, which is undoubtedly a wagon at 59 inches in height, but we're only talking about a few inches difference between all of these cars, and none of them are really approaching tall SUV crossover height. So to me, this feels a little bit more wagony than SUV. Now, if you agree with Toyota and call this a crossover, it means that they now have nine different crossovers and SUVs. I'm gonna to try to name them. The BZ4X, the Corolla Cross, the RAV4, the Highlander, the Grand Highlander, that's five, the Forerunner, the Land Cruiser, this, and the Sequoia. Nine different SUVs, which means that each segment is chopped pretty thin and it doesn't leave a whole lot of space for a new one, this. And that's specifically true when you consider exactly what space it's occupying. So check this out. Toyota is canceling the Venza for the second time. They've had an original Venza, it was canceled. Years later, came out with a second Venza, it was also canceled. The reason, it didn't sell all that well. Now, the Venza was a two-row crossover, just like the RAV4, but it was more expensive. Consumers didn't really seem to want that, so the Venza's gone. The problem is, the Venza started around $36,000. This, replacing the Venza, starts around $45,000. So it's more expensive than the vehicle that was just canceled due to poor sales. And in fact, the $45,000 starting price of the Crown Signia makes it more expensive than a regular Toyota Highlander, which offers more power, more size, and three-row seating compared to the two-row seating in the Crown Signia. Now, I will admit readily that the Crown Signia is a lot nicer inside than a Highlander, especially a Highlander that you can get in its price range, the 45 to 50, low $50,000 Highlander. This is definitely nicer, and that is a key to this vehicle's positioning. But I still kind of question the theory that someone's going to want a two-row crossover like a RAV4, but at a cost that's like a kind of mid or high trim Highlander. It doesn't seem like there's really that many people who are going to be interested in that. Again, considering it's got less 
less practicality than the Highlander and less power and performance. Now, with that said, for some people, the Crown Signia's powertrain will actually be an asset, even though it's got less power than a Highlander. And that's because this comes standard with a hybrid powertrain that gets fantastic mileage. It's a 2.5 liter hybrid four cylinder. It maxes out at only 240 horsepower. That's not a huge number, especially for a midsize crossover wagony thing. And the result is zero to 60 in just over seven seconds, not tremendously fast. It's not so slow that it's gonna be dangerous, but it's not exactly high performance. However, the benefit is you get 38 miles per gallon in combined city and highway driving, and that's with all wheel drive, which comes standard on the Crown Signia. So almost 40 miles per gallon, the trade-off is some performance and power, but really great fuel economy and still all weather security of all wheel drive. But anyway, on to the quirks and features of the Crown Signia beyond just the Crown Signia itself. We begin with the key, which is not just a regular Toyota key. This is the key to my Sequoia. It's a boring regular key because I've bought a boring regular Toyota. But the Crown gets this key that says Toyota Crown in this special area on the back that makes you feel more luxurious than a standard Toyota buyer. But before we climb inside, let's talk exterior quirks, starting with the front end styling, which is a little unorthodox. You come up here, there's a lot going on. So this thin light strip positioned where the headlight usually is, is not the headlight. It's the LED running light and it becomes the turn signal when you put on the turn signal. The headlight is actually here in this position, which kind of seems like where a fog light should be, but no, that's the headlight. Now, if you go above both of these things, you have this, which is just a hole. <laughs> So you have the headlight in a weird spot, the running light in a weird spot, and then a hole. Now, if you move to the center, you have the grill, which is also a little bit odd. It's sort of got a bunch of openings and then it fades into fewer openings, basically none, and that's your grill situation. Aside from the kind of weird front end in this car, though, I have to say, I really like how the Crown Signia looks. I am a fan of wagons. I really kind of think this is one. And I think they've done a great job making it look nice, which is impressive because the Crown Sedan is kind of a heinous car. It is really not a particularly attractive vehicle. Wheels are too big. The windows are too small. The whole profile is odd. The front end is weird. They've done a much better job with the Signia, adding on the rear end, making it premium, luxurious. It looks nice, good very well designed. I think this is a surprisingly attractive vehicle. And that's also true inside. The attractiveness of the Crown Signia definitely carries over to the interior where you have, well, a surprisingly nice one. It's well laid out. It's beautiful, really an attractive space in here. It's almost knocking on the door of Lexus quality, despite not having a Lexus brand name. By the way, that's another competitor for this car. The Lexus NX and RX are not tremendously more expensive either, which is also in the Toyota portfolio. But if for some reason you want a nice Toyota without the Lexus brand name, this car clearly delivers on the inside. You can also see the seats are very attractive. The upper part is this nice stitching and cool design. And there is a very minimal use of cheap plastics even on the dashboard. Basically everything you can see, feel, and touch is some high quality material. It all looks and feels surprisingly nice inside the Crown Signia. And that gives it some advantage over other models in the Toyota lineup, even at its high price tag. Now, on the inside of the Crown Signia, there are some interesting quirks and features worth pointing out. One that I absolutely love is the rear view mirror camera. You can see right now, the rear view mirror is a rear view mirror. But if you flip this switch, it becomes a camera and you can see behind you a lot easier. You don't have to look through the entire vehicle. It's a fantastic feature. So glad Toyota is implementing it on so many cars. I wish other manufacturers would follow suit. Now, you also have a center console here. That's not surprising, but the cool part is it opens from driver or passenger side. You get a button on one side, you can open it. You flip it the other way, you get a button on the passenger side. I don't know how they do it. It's magic, but they do, and it's wonderful. Now, here another interesting quirk of the Crown Signia is the wireless cell phone charger. A lot of cars have them. This one has it placed pretty well. It's located here in the center console, and it's completely vertical. 
comfortable. Not flat like in some cars, takes up a lot of space. Here the space is minimal and it's hard to show it on camera, but there's even little clips that hold your phone in place inside this little hole to make sure it stays charging even if you go over bumps or around corners, which is a neat idea. Also, how's this for an interesting quirk? In the Crown Signia, you can of course turn on your heated seats, your cooled seats, and your heated steering wheel, or you can let the car decide for you. You've heard of automatic climate control where you select a temperature and then the car makes that temperature happen inside. Well, here you can select automatic heated and cooled seats and steering wheel, and the car will turn them on or off depending on the temperature, so you don't have to press anything. You get inside and it's cold, your heated seat will be automatic automatically on if you want, same with the steering wheel. Of course, you can still manually turn them on, but auto heated seats and cooled seats is a pretty cool feature. And on the subject of heating things, this car has a heated windshield. The button is over here to the left of the steering wheel. You push it and it turns on the heated windshield. Now, unlike some really high-end off-roaders, it isn't the whole windshield that gets heated, but just an element around the edges of the windshield will heat it. Regardless, this is a great feature to have because it can heat up the ice that's binding your windshield wipers to the windshield on a very cold day and make it easier for you to drive off and other ice to melt off the windshield. That's nice to have. One other interesting item in here, you have paddle shifters mounted on the steering wheel, upshift and downshift. This is a feature that in the Crown Signia will never, ever be used. <laughs> and next up, another interesting button to the left of the steering wheel. This button here is for the headlight washers. If you press that, little jets shoot out from right above the headlights in order to clean them, and you can do it whenever you want. You feel like your headlights are a little dirty or dusty, maybe from being mounted so low, just push the button and then they're clean, and you don't have to do it yourself like some plebeian. And next up, we move on to the technology in this car, which is is actually pretty decent. I already mentioned the mirror camera, which I like, but then we have the center infotainment screen. Toyota's infotainment technology is pretty good. This screen is actually relatively small, but it still works reasonably well, fairly intuitive, very responsive, nice and easy to use, and of course Apple CarPlay and Android Auto come standard. One drawback of this infotainment system is that you can't have two panels showing at once, so you can't have your navigation and your music at the same time, but that's not really that huge of a deal, easy to switch between them. I will say another drawback is the absolutely ridiculous surround view camera system. You press this view button and it turns on and then just sort of shows this egg-shaped camera image around the car. You can't twist it or move it like in every other car with one of these cameras. You just have to kind of wait for it to show the spot you want to see. It's absurd. However, I will say one thing I love that I've learned from owning my Sequoia. If you're in drive and you press that same camera view button, it pops up the full regular camera system in this car, which is a pretty good system, and it shows more angles and better high-quality images. This is especially nice because the camera really only comes on if you're in reverse, but in case you're pulling into some tight area and you haven't shifted into reverse but you still want to see the cameras, you get an easy way to do that by just pressing the view button as long as you're in drive. Now, as for the gauge cluster in the Crown Signia, I gotta say, I really like it. I'm very impressed with it, which is a surprise because previous Toyota digital gauge clusters I have really not loved, including the one in my Sequoia, which I would say is only okay. That's a 24 model. This is a 25, and they've updated it well to add more configurability. You can now configure all three panels in this digital gauge cluster. So on the left, you can have your audio, what's playing. In the center, you can have a Map. On the right, you can have your current trip details, odometer, etc., or you can mix it up and show various other things on all of those screens. They're all configurable and they let you basically see whatever it is that you might want. It's hard to imagine wanting even more. And you can even focus this screen more if you want. You can get rid of the digital gauges, the circle components, and have your info displayed in an even larger size on all three of these panels. It's a great digital gauge cluster. We've been waiting for a good one from Toyota, and this is the first new Toyota I've seen with a really good system for the gauge cluster. Also, another cool thing in the gauge cluster, one of the displays actually gives you an eco score when you're driving along. It'll rate how eco-friendly you're driving, how fuel-efficient you're driving, and so you can measure that against previous drives and see just how economically you're driving the car, which is kind of cool. 
And next up, we move on to the back seat in the Crown Signia. And I gotta say, the sizing is pretty good. Even though this has kind of a lower roof line compared to a lot of crossovers and SUVs, and it's not intended for maximizing passenger carrying capability with a third row and back, there's decent space here. I have the front seat positioned where I would sit as a pretty tall driver. And I'm sitting back here, my knees still have several inches before they would hit the back of the front seat. I have headroom, even though we have a big panoramic sunroof here, which sometimes steals headroom, especially especially in a lower car. It's just a lot of space, knees, head, hips. It all works out back here and it's a comfortable place to be. And there are some nice amenities in the back as well. You got rear heated seats. You can turn them on in this button on the door panel, as you can see. You got rear climate vents back here, which is also nice, and rear USB-C ports for plugging in and charging your devices. And of course, you got rear cup holders back here as well. There's some integrated into the door panel on each side if you want, or you can fold down this center armrest and find more cup holders. So nothing particularly exciting or cool or quirky or featurey back here, but a nice, comfortable place to spend time. And finally, we move on to the cargo area in the Crown Signia. You open up the power tailgate and you discover a cargo area. Nothing particularly exciting back here, although it is deeper, I, longer than I expected it to be. So there's decent space back here. Again, despite the fact that this isn't some huge Mondo SUV, it's got pretty good cargo sizing. I will say the roof height probably does play some role in here of limiting cargo space a bit. If you wanted to totally maximize and jam it packed, a taller crossover would have a little bit more space, but I think it does the job for most people most of the time. Now, one interesting thing back here, under the floor, you don't really have any extra storage like you do in some cars, but if you lift up the floor, it's hinged after a few inches where there is a small little extra storage compartment where you can put small little extra items if you want to. Just a little bit of stuff can go back there. You can lift up the floor the rest of the way, but you can see there's stuff back there. There's not really space where you can put any extra storage items except in that little compartment right at the front, which frankly, is better than nothing. Now, also worth pointing out that back in the cargo area, you have these latches you can use to drop the rear seats. Not power operated, but that's fine. And that means if you're coming up to the car with a large item, you don't have to go around to each individual back seat to drop it. You can just do it from the cargo area, which adds some convenience. Of course, if you want to put the seats back up, you do have to do that individually at the seats themselves, but it's still better than nothing in the cargo area of the Crown Signia. All right, driving the Toyota Crown Signia. <laughs> the most aggressively anyone has ever described this vehicle. Um, <laughs> in the car world, station wagon is a dirty word. You don't want to say station wagon. Nobody wants a station wagon. Everybody wants a crossover. You can't say station wagon, even if you are offering a station wagon, unless you are Subaru, and then you just say Outback and then everybody gets it and they're happy. This car is nice looking. It's gonna occupy an obscure portion of Toyota's lineup. It will sell in small numbers, but it drives really nicely. It looks really good, I think, from the outside. Um, the interior is just gorgeous in here. It's priced way too high. It's, it's in a very thinly sliced segment. I don't know why anyone would really buy this car over the Highlander, to be honest. And Toyota's like, well, it's for empty nesters. They want better mileage. They don't need the seats. Yeah, but if you give someone the opportunity to have more seats for less money, they're gonna take it because the, ah, maybe we'll need it. I'm not sure, honey, don't you think? Yeah, I would probably, yeah, you should just get the seats, save some money. Like no one is gonna buy this, but for the few people who do, they're gonna be treated to actually a pretty nice experience. This car is almost at the level of Lexus quality. And honestly, the other thing that's kind of cool about it is it's gonna be a little bit more, you know, special and, and interesting compared to a boring standard Highlander or RAV4 hybrid or whatever. Like those cars are everywhere. There's literally one <laughs> right in front of me as I'm saying this. Now, to me, the biggest drawback of this car, I should point out the um, pricing is just, is too high. I mean, the Venza was already not popular and it was like eight grand cheaper than this. <laughs> so I don't think we're gonna find a huge, I don't think the strategy is take the price and make it even higher. I don't know that that's necessarily gonna do it. But let's talk driving experience a little bit uh, more specifically. This drives great. It's very smooth, nice and comfortable. Um, good amount of interior room in here. Knee room, head room, leg room, hip room. It all feels nice. Now, it isn't fast at all. I mean, it really is not a fast vehicle. It's it's fine. It's totally adequate. It gets you around town, gets you on the freeway, no problem. But you will never win any drag races in this car. But I think that's totally okay. Again, car enthusiasts are going to be like, that's slow, and it is. 
by car enthusiast standards, but for for grandparents from Calgary who want to come down uh, to Palm Springs in the winter, this is a great option for them. Great highway fuel economy, and when they're back in Calgary, they can still have a car to drive around their grandkids. Although I suspect they'd rather have the seats in the Highlander. It is worth pointing out though that this car is a lot nicer than the Highlander. And the reason it's more expensive is because you can get a cheaper Highlander than this, but it's kind of an average lower trim Highlander. This is a nice car at this price point. It really is like a legitimately nice high-end car with a nice interior. <clears throat> you're just making the trade-off of seats, but you're getting the great benefit of fantastic fuel economy. This is still a desirable vehicle if for whatever reason it does fit into your space. You want something nicer than a RAV4, you don't need the seats on a Highlander, this is that. I just think that's a very thin slice of the population. Uh, but I also think the result of that is this car will probably be a pretty good deal on the used market in a few years. Uh, and maybe that's the best way to buy the Crown Insignia, especially if you're a wagon enthusiast, you get a secret hidden Toyota wagon. Just make sure to call it a crossover if you ever meet any Toyota people. And so that's the new 2025 Toyota Crown Signia. <laughs> Frankly, I'm not sure that this is something. <laughs> it's nice. It drives reasonably well. It looks good. It gets great mileage. It has a fantastic interior, but I'm not sure if anyone's really going to buy this. I like that it's sort of Toyota coming back with a wagon, but they're selling it as a crossover and they already have eight others that you can choose from. And they've already canceled the Venza twice in this segment. So I'm not really sure if this will actually do any better, but I guess we'll find out. And now it's time to give the Crown Signia a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 47 out of 100, which places the Crown Signia here against some relevant cars. I like the Crown Signia in principle, as it's effectively a Toyota wagon, even though they call it a crossover, but in practice it leaves me confused. It replaces the slow-selling Venza, but it's even more expensive, which I suspect will lead to even slower sales. It's also more expensive than hybrid versions of the Toyota RAV4, which offer better gas mileage and similar practicality, though not the same level of luxury. For luxury, however, you can upgrade to a Lexus NX or RX for not much more money and still keep the hybrid powertrain just with a better brand name and a nicer interior. The Crown Signia is a legitimately nice car, but it doesn't really fit in, and I'd probably buy one of the other options first. 